I thank my colleague from Arizona, Mr. Gosar, for bringing us together tonight as we get a chance to visit and celebrate uh, heroes that are amongst us, um, whether it's in spirit or in body, as we are still so fortunate to have Chester Nez uh, with us, one of the original 29 as well. And with me tonight, I have a few excerpts of articles that have been written around the country that capture some stories. Uh, recently in the Frontetta's desk, an author by the name of Laurel Morales captured a story um, of Chester Nez, and it starts like this. Growing up in New Mexico, Chester Nez and his, many of his fellow Navajo were punished for speaking their language. Now, you talk about a, a language as they, they went to, they were pulled away to boarding schools, so many of uh, the young Navajo across the country, and uh, the importance of what they were able to accomplish during World War II. Um, in the words of uh, Major Howard Connor of the 5th Marine Division, um, he declared that were it Navajos, the Marines would have never taken Iwo Jima. Uh, the importance of language and what they were able to accomplish. Um, the article goes on to read that years later, Nez was shocked to learn that he'd been recruited by the Marines specifically to devise a code using the same language the government tried to beat out of him. Um, it was extremely ironic one of the very things they were forbidden to do, speak Navajo, ended up helping us save the war. And uh, Mr. Nez goes on to say that he and his fellow code talkers first developed an alphabet that, as you described, uh, Mr. Gosar, using everyday Navajo words to re represent letters of words. Um, as as you, you, you talked about um, submarine, ironfish, uh, beshlo, uh, which is spelled B E. S H L O, uh, hummingbird, da het ti hi, to talk about fighter planes. And it's amazing how, when we talk about the Japanese and how they were so effective at cracking codes, how they couldn't crack this one. Um, Mr. Nez goes on to say in the article that you know, the last, uh, being one of the last original code, talker, code talkers living in Albuquerque with his son, uh, father of six children, he has nine grandchildren and eight grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And it goes on to say that today, with so many people leaving the reservation, Navajo elders like Nez fear that language is dying. Nez hopes Navajo children learn the story of code talkers so they understand just how critical it is to earn their own language. And bringing us together, Mr. Gosar, I think this evening to help celebrate the history of our code talkers, as it wasn't until Senator Bingham moved legislation back in 2000 to be able to give and honor of our, our original 29, a few of them at the very least, and their families with gold medals and silver medals to the others that were also trained to go on. So I think this is an example of a few stories that we'll be submitting and sharing this evening to be able to celebrate the lives and stories and the history, especially on today as, as we remember Pearl Harbor and all of the sacrificed uh, families, all the families that we lost that day, so many brave soldiers as well. So thanks for bringing us tonight. I look forward to many stories and continue to share many of the articles that we've been able to find capturing the history and personal stories of our friends, our heroes, the code talkers uh, from all throughout New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. I thank the gentleman from New Mexico.